Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, a video will be slightly of different type. Uh, in the last few days, in the medical world, there has been a buzz about one of new drug which is supposed to be giving magical results. Well, seeing this kind of results is not a new thing. Every other day in the WhatsApp University, we get some of the other drug which is, you know, just a combination of two or three things and just cures any kind of cancer. But today, let's not discuss about those things. Let's not uh, try to give you WhatsApp GAN. I'll try to give you some genuine information. And to give that, I am not the expert. I have another expert with me who is a medical oncologist. Welcome, Dr. Hemant, who is a well-known medical oncologist. Uh, been a very good friend of mine. We know each other for about um, 18 years now. Yes. So it's all up to you today. Tell me this. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you also heard about uh, this WhatsApp forward claiming 100% uh, result in one of the type of cancer that is rectal cancer. So is this also just another WhatsApp university just uh, saying your six years of degree is bullshit and you just combine two, three things which cures all sides of all types of cancers or uh, is there any real substance in this thing? Yeah, uh, indeed, actually, uh, just few days back, even I was bombarded by messages on WhatsApp. Uh, patients requesting me, is this actually true that there is something that can probably cure 100% of uh, patients with a particular type of cancer and is this probably treatment available for everyone so a lot of discussion kept on happening in multiple forums and then we kind of realized now uh, coming to this there are a few things so uh, this is a drug called dostarlimab which okay. they kind of uh, why are cancer with... drugs so difficult to pronounce <laughs> okay anyway go on yes uh, so this is a drug called dostarlimab, which they have tried in rectal cancer. Now, every year, the biggest uh, conference in oncology in cancer patients happens in Chicago, and people wait for a really uh, wonderful thing to come out of that. And this year, this was the drug. So uh, this study was about a drug called dostarlimab, dostarlimab in a specific population with rectal cancer. Okay, uh, you mentioned the word dostarlimab. So tell us more about it. What exactly it is? Is it also a chemotherapy drug or something else? How does it work? Tell us more about those right. Uh If you consider broadly what are the specific medications that can be used in patients with cancer, the earliest and the most common drug that all of us know and many of us fear is chemotherapy. Most of the patients do not come to us for treatment because the word chemotherapy is used. Chemotherapy is basically a chemical compound used to treat uh, patients with cancer. Yes. That's been the conventional treatment right. for a lot of uh, right. cancers. It's been yes. the conventional treatment. Yes. And the way it works is it kills basically any cell that divides fast. Right? Yes. So we know that cancer cells are fast dividing cells and hence chemotherapy works against that. At the same time, it affects normal cells which divide fast. So yes. most commonly, you know that patients uh, complain That's of hair loss. Uh, hair loss. Hair yes. loss, yes. right? Yes. Yes. So yes. hair loss is basically the hair cells are dividing fast. They can get nail color changes. They can get oral ulcers, etc., yes. etc. So, because it uh, it thinks that too as a cancer cell. Right. And, uh, right. It basically, basically, it's dividing fast. Dividing yes. fast. Whatever yes. divides fast, it tries to attack that. Okay. So okay. that was the first era of chemotherapy. Okay. Then we came across a drug called targeted therapy. Okay. Now, in the year 2000, there's a specific cancer called chronic myeloid leukemia. It is okay. a form of blood cancer. Okay. In the 90s, people would survive yeah. maximum for two years, three years, or maybe even just five years with that cancer. Once it is diagnosed. Right. Yes. Okay. So, in the year 2000, they found that there's a specific target called BCRABL okay. and a drug called imatinib. Okay. 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 Now, this imatinib directly targets this molecular pathway called BCR okay. And when it does that, this cancer is very well controlled, goes into remission and almost nearly a cure. Okay. Once okay. this drug came into the picture in the year 2000, people with CML are living for more than 10 years now. It has become like diabetes or hypertension, okay. if well, okay. very well controlled and treated. Okay. Okay. So that is where the era of targeted therapy started and now we have got multiple drugs which target specific pathways or specific areas with the cancer especially for lung cancer, for uh, head and neck or oral cancers, for kidney cancers. So multiple cancers have targeted therapy. So these are not, uh, these don't come under chemotherapy? No, these don't come under chemotherapy. Okay. Okay. They are usually oral medications many of the time and have a lesser side effects or a different side effect profile compared okay. to chemotherapy. Okay. Okay. So like uh, the imatinib that you mentioned, so you're saying that dostarlimab is also a targeted therapy for rectal cancer, am I right? Yeah. 
it is not exactly a targeted therapy now after targeted therapy there is something called immunotherapy which patients do ask many a times what exactly is immunotherapy now uh, cancer cells are very smart they are your own body cells right yes. so in case if you can imagine every day all of us have the potential to develop a cancer right, right. scary yeah, yeah. fine <laughs> but uh, the body's immune system is very well that it can identify these cancer cells in a very early stage and destroy but unfortunately sometimes the cancer cells are even more smarter mm. they have the tendency to escape the body's immune mechanism suppress the immune mechanism to an extent so that they have the ability to grow and the immune system doesn't recognize it okay. now what does this new form of treatment called immunotherapy does it basically removes the block mm. which is seen between the cancer cells and the immune cells okay so your body's natural immunity now starts fighting against the cancer cells so it basically detects it right and yeah, then it tries to right, stop it kind of basically okay. probably you could say that your immune system is boosted to fight against mm. the cancer cells mm. now this is a wonderful uh, treatment that is coming now in multiple cancers there have been good treatment option with lung cancer good treatment option with even colon cancer where this immunotherapy works uh, to try and control the disease as much as possible Okay. right okay. so till now i am telling that control the disease as much as yes. possible yes. Yes. now dostarli map is a form of immunotherapy which probably has now a potential for cure in cancer okay okay so you are saying this dostarli map may be in the future going to revolutionize the treatment of rectal cancer so before that tell me how is it managed now like what are the modes of treatment of rectal cancer and how is the general outcome how does the patient do after uh, starting the treatment? so if you consider what exactly is the rectal cancer we have what is called large intestine or large bowel all of us have it and the end portion where basically the stool comes out that is the area called rectum yes. rectal cancers are common in mangler it is actually pretty high compared to other places there might be varied reasons okay now once a patient is detected with rectal cancer most often we need to use all three modalities of treatment that is where there with us so surgery plays a very important role radiation plays a very important role and of course there is chemotherapy okay. so there is combination of chemotherapy along with radiation or surgery initially or then radiation chemotherapy or sometimes we might give chemotherapy and radiation earlier okay. and then proceed with the surgery okay the issue with this is that area is a very sensitive area and with the treatment yes it has got its own toxicities uh, its own side effects somebody might have very difficult pain while passing motion uh difficult because one has to do that every day so yes there are particular toxicity and sometimes patients who undergo surgery end up having a stoma stoma is an opening for the motion to come out or the feces to come out on the skin on the abdominal wall and that can be a permanent thing so nobody would because want the that. normal passage, passage will be blocked, blocked and uh, you an need alternative to, yeah uh, you need to kind of yes, give a yes, bypass yes. so that this happens And, and that's going to be lifelong most like yeah, most of the time that is going to be lifelong mm. so uh, none of us would want that even i would not yes, want that yes, yes. so uh, the treatment has been good with this treatment probably you could tell that over 3 years around 60 to 70% of the patients with cancer which is either localized to the rectum or just going beyond that okay. do not get cancer back so okay. in 3 years 60 to 70% is a decently good number okay. fine but then yes it is associated with important toxicity so before coming to the treatment or say before coming to dosarlimab uh, tell me something about uh, the reason why this rectal cancer happens is it hereditary is it genetic and what's the difference between hereditary and genetic are they same because a lot of people tend to get confused with these two words right uh, very important question because most of the time patients do come and ask that uh, see this cancer is there can it be hereditary do i need to worry that my kid probably is going to get it now there is a difference between something called a genetic defect and a hereditary defect all cancers are due to a genetic defect basically you have a chromosome which is there that all of us have a small mutation or a mistake ends up being leading to the cancer now that can be bad luck or can be due to so many reasons that we kind of uh, have habits due to external factors. external factors so it can be due to smoking it can be due to alcohol it can be due to a uh, high diet which has got red meat okay, okay. so okay. these are more so related to cancers in colon and rectum okay now at the same time the other word is hereditary now hereditary is when a particular type of cancer due to a genetic defect which gets carried on from a father to kid 
to daughter or somebody else okay. so that can go uh, in multiple people in the family so at that time you call this as a genetic defect which is hereditary okay. so hereditary it, means it. that it has to go through the line okay. so we know that breast and ovarian cancers have a strong hereditary and family history with okay. a particular mutation called BRCA is there hmm. so if you remember angelina jolie who is a very wonderful actress she found to have this BRCA defect and ended up having what is called prophylactic prevention hmm. to uh, cancer not to occur called mastectomy and uh, removal of ovaries okay. right okay. so okay. same way colon and rectal cancers have a particular genetic defect called msi now okay. msi basically stand for micro satellite in, uh, instability or there's something called mismatch repair means okay which is a genetic defect which can occur in individual okay or it can be a hereditary okay in a certain set called lynch syndrome okay. so this okay. mystery can go run in the family or can occur by it's itself in the, in, in the new person yeah. okay. now this mutation is important because this is where the drug is going to work okay so you mentioned about this msi defect and uh, now about this drug dostarlimab so do you mean that this drug works in only those rectal cancer patients who have msi defect or is it a generalized thing which works in all rectal cancers irrespective of the genetic mutation so now that that's where lies the most important point now like what i told this msi defect it probably occurs in around 5 to 10% of patients with rectal cancer so you can see that probably in 20 people one might have this defect Okay. And now this okay. drug is going to work only in them. Okay. 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 So, in case you get rectal cancer, probably yes, you should be lucky enough to get that defect, that so defect, that you yes. have a chance yes. that you will receive this drug. So basically, it's going to divide the treatment into rectal cancer patients having MSI defect, right. rectal cancer patients without having MSI right. defect. So okay. rectal cancer patients with MSI defect. Now, what they have actually seen in this study. now this i told is immunotherapy drug and as i told the standard of care was chemotherapy radiation and surgery yes, yes. so they decided to give patients who have got this msi defect initial immunotherapy every 3 weeks for a duration of 6 months okay and 12 patients were included in the study now what they decided in case at the end of 6 months these patients have an excellent response that they see that uh, by any imaging modality like pet ct or mri or even through probably biopsy they see that this patient doesn't have cancer at that point of time mm-hmm. they are not going to offer any further treatment like surgery radiation or chemotherapy okay. in case they have some residual disease they offer the standard modality of treatment okay. so when they were planning they were really not sure how many of these patients actually will have a very good response having right. other treatments so also so only once they completed 6 uh, months of treatment and then they found that 100% of these patients with this particular defect had a complete response right okay. now this is something that was not known did before. they try it in other patients who don't have msi defect also no it no? is not going to work it is okay. not going okay. to work okay. we have evidence from previous uh, drugs previous immunotherapy drugs that it works only in patients with this defect the specific targeted yeah, it, it is okay. like a targeted therapy okay. only all okay. right okay. it is a immunotherapy drug which works with people who have got this specific defect okay. a drug called pembrolizumab which is like dostarlimab okay has been approved in stage 4 colon cancer okay. right okay. compared to chemotherapy it gives a very good response and very good survival benefit so we know that in patients with msi defect this drug works Okay. Right. Okay. So the same principle has been used with the newer drug called dostarlimab. Okay. Right. Okay. So only the question was, is it going to work in all patients or yeah. not? Yeah. Definitely, so, it's going to. It's not going to work in those patients who don't have the defect. Yes. So okay. who don't have the defect, it's not going to work. And it was really amazing to see that 12 patients had a complete response. And now this makes us hopeful. that yes probably we are going to get newer drugs okay. in the okay. future which probably are going to work like this but do you uh, really mean that is this data sufficient for me no these are very early signs that only a very small number 12 patients had a complete response for this drug to kind of get approval you need a much larger studies a much larger yes. population with a different types of rectal cancer maybe some more sub categories under that categories might yes. be that yes. and see that does it work in almost anyone so in case it starts working in almost everyone it is a wonderful study and this is going to be the future of treatment oh. so you mentioned about this another drug pembrolizumab which uh, was somewhat similar to dostarlimab 
so why do all this study i mean when we know that that also works like this why is it not used before i mean right. why all these things came now suddenly right uh, so uh, every pharmaceutical company tries to bring its own drug and they have ended up trying to do multiple drugs with this particular background where it works as a immunotherapy drug right okay. Okay. so one of the earliest drug and a very successful drug till now is a drug called pembrolizumab which is approved in lung cancer which is approved in uh, colon cancer which is approved in multiple other cancers okay. right it works really well but most of the studies have been in stage 4 cancers mm. right mm. this was one of the first times where in a stage 2 stage 3 cancer setting they used the particular drug called dostarlimab i would probably tell that dostarlimab is a sister drug but it is not same like pembrolizumab okay. so the biggest question is can i use pembrolizumab <laughs> probably logically yes that pembrolizumab works against msi cancer and probably i can use it but however we go by strong data and strong study background and because of that pembrolizumab as of now doesn't have approval in patients with rectal cancer in this particular setting so if you ask me probably would i like to use yes i would like to use but am i allowed to use or is it right to use probably no Okay, so so far you told that it has uh, been tried in stage two and stage three cancers, and it is it really seems like a wonder drug and eliminating the need for surgery, uh, other chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and of course along with that the side effects that come with that. Right. So uh, the thing is that whenever we think of we or any common man thinks of uh, cancer treatment, the most important thing that comes to his or her mind is the cost factor. Uh, usually it is a well-known thing that the cancer treatment is very expensive. so because surgery and radiotherapy is eliminated will it in any way decrease the treatment cost or is it going to be a really expensive thing the second thing is that is it already available for the treatment in india okay. or uh, how does it look okay. uh, very interesting and important question right so uh, we always kind of say cancer therapy as uh, uh, a disease which basically impacts the financial situation and the economic burden on the family so uh the issues why the cancer drugs are so expensive because most of them are kind of produced and patented by the us pharmaceutical companies and unless the patent fails the price of the drug is governed by what is happening in the us right okay. and we know that the insurance system basically runs the us medical mm. system mm. and the cost of drugs are really huge there yeah. and that basically gets reflected in the indian system Okay. Yes, probably there are certain cancers where we are able to offer what they have because the patents have expired and we've got what's called either generic or a biosimilar drug. Okay. So currently we can offer a really good standard of care treatment for lung cancer with a particular mutation, okay. like I told CML, where imatinib yes. is very cheap. Yes. Yes. Uh, you've got uh, breast cancer where probably you can have a targeted therapy. Many of them are actually covered by Ayushman Bharat. now when it comes to immunotherapy these have been the drugs which have come up probably in the last 5 to 10 years yes and in india probably in the last 5 to 7 years okay. right yeah. so we have the drugs like nivolumab pembrolizumab some other drugs like durvalumab that is there right now this particular drug called dostarlimab is currently not available in india Okay. Right? okay and in case somebody wants this drug they need to import and from what i've heard uh, no specific references that i've got it might cost somewhere between 8 lakhs to 10 lakhs per dose and per that dose. needs to be given every 3 weeks for a duration of 6 months which probably comes Wait, around every 3 weeks for 6 months yeah so roughly around you are saying 8 like to 9 8 to 9 doses so probably it might and each dose costing around 8, 8 to 10 lakhs okay i do not have a reference that's for that's roughly this. a crore yeah. rupees yeah yes. a crore okay yeah. so yes uh, really impressive drug somebody who is probably can afford this yes it might be worthwhile but to a common man yes this is not possible now right to a common man this is not possible now and i told it works only in a specific subset so we yes. cannot standardize yes. the standard still remains surgery chemotherapy and radiation which is kind of possible either through ayushman for those patients who are really poor right. or right. otherwise right. also it is feasible so as of now there is absolutely no cost comparison we have other immunotherapy drugs like i told you lumumab and rolumab which still cost around 1 to 2 lakhs for every 3 week dose so okay. it is so that's like 4 to 5 times cheaper yes it is 4 to 5 times cheaper but still not affordable by common man even yes. probably me yes. it is going to be difficult yes. Yes. but in the coming 10 to 15 years we are going to get biosimilar drugs similar to this mm. and then probably the cost of treatment is going to come down so 
I know that the cost implication is there currently, but I am actually seeing a really good future in the therapy of cancer. A lot of targeted therapies are now available for a very less price, which is probably affordable to at least 80 to 90 percent of the people. And the same way, immunotherapy, I'm probably going to see that in the next 10 to 15 years, we are probably going to have these drugs, which are going to be the standard of care. Okay. So the future is changing from chemotherapy, targeted, targeted. therapy to immunotherapy. Yeah. And yes, trying yes. to improve on the survival at the same time where you're trying to reduce the side effects. Yes, so that is yes, what we are looking yes, at. Yes. So these were a few things in brief about rectal cancer and dostalibab. Now tell me a very important thing. Uh, you as a medical oncologist, uh, what do you want to tell the patients? Let's 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 just restrict this to rectal cancers. Uh, what are the things that a layman uh, can do so that his or her chances of developing rectal cancer decreases or second thing unfortunately if somebody ends up having rectal cancer how can the early detection be done uh, what are they supposed to do so that the damage remains minimal right uh, unfortunately even to this day most of the time we see rectal cancers in advanced cases now some of the common risk factors for somebody developing rectal cancer include consumption of uh, tobacco in any form especially smoking alcohol, diet which is high in red meat or especially processed red meat, a diet which lacks fiber okay. right? Okay. and somebody who is on the heavier side, obesity. Now okay. these are the common risk factors which are known and these are the something that can be modified. modified. I usually right. say to my patient that 60 times any cancer is just due to bad luck yes. but then 40% of the time we, we are the ones to be blamed to kind of uh, mm. making it uh, as a risk factor for development of cancer. So rectal cancer is something that is uh, modifiable by uh, reducing these risk factors. Especially if they have a cancer in the family. Yes, maybe. yes, exactly. That is another thing that somebody has got a family history of colon or rectal cancer. They need to be aware that they can have because like I told the MSI sometimes runs in the family. Mm. Fine. Mm. So these are the factors which are probably modifiable. Now, as you told, uh, yes, probably most of the things we might not be aware and we can modify, but then can we kind of detect it early? Right. Right. Now, rectal cancer, what are the most common symptoms? Symptoms are basically what patients come to us with the complaints, right? So, most common symptoms including bleeding while passing motion, okay. while passing okay. stool, or probably some mucus, some kind of jelly material while passing stool, or Pain while passing through. Now, pain okay. is not an early symptom. Pain is not an early symptom. Only when the cancer has grown significantly, they have pain. Or having either significant constipation or significant diarrhea. Now, these are things that can probably that happen every very day. Very common. Yes, okay, these yes. are day in, day out. Yes, yes. Now, somebody who has got the symptoms persistently for two weeks or more, mm. fine. And you have un ref gone to your physician or surgeon and... Uh, try to manage with the basic medication. Many of the times patients do tell that they've got hemorrhoids for like lasting for six months, one yes, year, no. Yes, Usually yes, with yes. the medication that should subside. Yes. If these complaints are persistent for two weeks or more, visit your physician, tell them that this is something that probably I'm worried, should I be looking for and get it evaluated. Because the evaluation is easy. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, in India, uh, meeting a gastroenterologist is easier compared to in Definitely. the United States. Definitely. So, gastroenterologists or uh, oncologists are people probably you need to uh, visit. More so, it is not only us, surgeons, physicians also can detect this. So, a simple examination with the finger can give some clue. More so, you need either a sigmoidoscopy or a colonoscopy. Basically, a scopy that is passed from below to see if there is cancer or not. Okay. And also, it is recommended that somebody who is above the age of 50 years should either undergo colonoscopy once in a lifetime or at least 10 years. Okay. Or a sigmoidoscopy in five years without having any without symptoms. having symptoms. Okay. So that is a standard uh, recommendation for screening. Unfortunately, it is not often practiced in India. So this is something that can be done. So you can probably avoid risk factors for uh, cancer to form. You can try to have the symptoms in case you have this is symptoms. Go to your doctor, ask that probably you want to get evaluated, or at least get yourself or your family members screened that uh, possibly they can have uh, this form of malignancy. So at least one colonoscopy once done, probably in lifetime you don't need one more. Yeah. Fine. So yeah. this is something that can be done easily in our setting rather than spending lakhs or crores for, the treatment. for the treatment. Right. Yes. So definitely because 
getting detected at an early stage irrespective of the modes of treatment will always have a better chance of survival Definitely. with lesser damage than compared to getting detected yes. at, yes. An, uh, at somebody stage. with a very early stage probably you only need surgery yes somebody with a slightly advanced stage probably a surgery and radiation would suffice yes but yes. somebody with more advanced stage you will need everything exactly so exactly. earlier the detection lesser is the treatment that is yes. needed and yes. better are the outcomes so this was in brief a discussion about this rectal cancer and this magical drug dostarlimab so uh, the future seems very uh, bright very hopeful uh, as of now there are a few challenges like uh, the study is inadequate i mean it obviously needs a, a larger study with much more population and uh, the biggest problem for india as of now is the cost so maybe in the future the cost will come down and then maybe in the future the cost will come down and another important factor is that this is not applicable to all patients with rectal cancer right. this is applicable to only a small subset that is you said about i think about 5% of 5 patients percent of, so 5%. 5 percent of the population with this msi defect so with this we are really hopeful that in the future we'll be able to conquer cancer but uh, at the same time uh, a lot of importance should be given to detecting it early so that uh, the problems or uh, the side effects associated with treatment can be minimized and so okay. more and more awareness should be given to the patient so that the modifiable factors uh, can be decreased to a significant extent so i am sure this was a very informative session uh, of course for me and as well as for all the viewers uh, thank you very much for uh, sharing all this information thank you thank you for coming to the channel let's hope to have more and more such informative videos so Thank you, Dr. Skanda, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, being an oncologist is not an easy job. What I want to see, early detection of cancer, avoiding the risk factors, and definitely trying to improve outcomes with newer forms of therapy. Thank you.